Good morning. Hello. This is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Philip. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Yes, good evening for you. Yeah, we're both both talking about uh, we're both in our cave-like settings with our controlled lighting and and uh, the nice thing is the temperature, no shared spaces for us. That's great. But Philip, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Sure. I'm Philip Ekberg. I am based out of Gothenburg, or actually south of Gothenburg, which is a city in Sweden. It's pretty cold now, but in the summer, it's beautiful. Um, day to day, I do consulting in .NET, do Maui, Xamarin, everything around building anything in .NET, really. And people may also have seen me on Pluralsight. I do a lot of courses on Pluralsight covering .NET and everything around building good .NET applications. And also try to go to a few conferences and and talk about everything that's new around .NET and, and C Sharp in general. I always like to ask that, like, uh, as an MVP, you've been an MVP for a long time, since 2013? 2013, yeah, 2013. 2013. It's a long time. Yeah. It, it, so with that, uh, it, what are your primary contribution types? It, well, did it start as a as an instructor, as a plural site author? Um. So I, I started off doing a book. Like I, I wrote a lot of blog posts around C Sharp and some of the internals and how to do really advanced things in C Sharp and, and experimenting with the language. And I took all my blog posts and put them up in a book format. Like I had to rewrite everything and, and did a self-published book. And that kind of got me into, you know, um, everything around uh, doing training for others, like be courses or or classroom training or you know normal presentations um so that then um by random led me to meet the um the the folks over at plural side and kind of led into doing some courses for them and it's just going on from that yeah i i know that uh, you have quite a few people that are they're authors that way i i'm intrigued by mm -hmm. this the start you say you were collecting your you're already writing you're blogging and you pull that together because my first book was a self pub. It was actually very successful. I mean, we we ended up doing a print run. It wasn't print on demand wasn't a thing yet, right. and and so this was what late nineties, you know, right around two thousand, and uh, you know, so doing that, it, it, you know, we actually we printed. I think like the small run was like five thousand copies. Oh, so wow. it was a it was a bit That's of a, a financial <laughs> push, right? Well, lot. we sold yeah. them all, so we did. Oh, that's did awesome. very well yeah but it, it that whole style of you know, people say well how do you get started and they aspire mm. to be an author and that's a great way to do it is build an outline i'll simplify it build an outline <laughs> write content around that yeah. and then compile it uh into into the book so you can even get feedback you you get that yeah, feedback exactly. you get the editing from feedback in the blog posts that go into the book and I did the same. Like, I, so I took all my my blog posts, and originally I wanted to just take them all and and publish it in a printed format, mm. but then quickly realized like this is not going to work, work out at yeah. all. Yeah. No. So I had to rewrite everything and make it like learn everything about writing a book. And on top of that, I decided to do it in LaTeX, uh, so I could compile my own book, uh, which was an experience on its own. So you know, that's um, I always like learning new things and experimenting with the tech that I work with. Uh, be it C Sharp or .NET or LaTeX or whatever I work with. Um, so that was good fun, learning a lot uh, in the process. Well, and, and I always, that's another thing I recommend to people that are interested in becoming an MVP. It's like, share what you're learning. You don't have to be an expert, share your journey. And sometimes yep. that's that's a great part of the learning process. I'm one of those people like, it, for me to learn things, and I learned this back in middle school, that mm -hmm. I learned quicker if I you know, wrote it down, wrote about it, expanded upon it, upon it, researched that that topic, and so I just started practicing my writing skills. Other people absolutely hate writing. That's fine. You can create video content. Maybe hire a ghostwriter yeah. to yeah. translate the video content into the written word. Exactly, and the same goes for videos. Like you could have someone that you just talk to, and you can do something and produce something together. If you just like and have a passion for spreading knowledge, there's many different formats to do that do that 
So like back in the day when I started, like there was forums and there was blogs and, yeah. you know, video wasn't really a big thing when I started. Now, somebody just asked me over the weekend, is it, uh, you know, when was the last time you were in a uh, bulletin board system? I'm like, wow, 1988, yeah. <laughs> 1997, sometime around there. But I mean, we have like the discord servers, a lot of other places that are, you know, forums that act like that, those old BBSs mm -hmm. and a lot of people. This is another thing I tell people that want to become an MVP is uh, like go in and answer questions in Microsoft yeah. tech community and other forums that are out there. There's so many places you can go and share your knowledge. And I remember even like before Stack Overflow, I know I, I even paid for a subscription on, on experts exchange, like to be able to communicate with other experts and get like answers really quickly. And then Stack Overflow came along and I started contributing as well as getting answers to questions and problems that I had uh, in a much more comfortable format. Um, so time changes. And, and I think it's um, it's interesting to see how you can adapt to it and help out in different mediums as well uh, over these um, over these decades. What what was your uh, what was the process like for you to become an MVP and, and, and kind of a two part question? And, and mm -hmm. how would you compare it to what the process looks like today? Right. Um, so uh, it's funny because I, I back in when I wanted to be an MVP, I actually wanted to be an MVP and I aspire to like, how do I how do I become an MVP? And I uh, back then you could self nominate. So I nominated myself uh, and quite quickly understood that I'm not doing nearly enough uh, in terms of what others are doing. So uh, I got couple of, of no's over quite a few years because I, I just didn't realize how much a lot of the MVPs back then contributed to the community. Uh, it wasn't just about answering a couple of questions in a forum. It was more about spreading knowledge and making an impact. So after I understood that, I, I found my passion of what I wanted to do. And I really loved writing blog posts and, and getting that out there. And that was a good springboard to you know, get into sharing my my experience and my knowledge, which then led to the book and then led to Pluralsight and all of that, just uh, after collecting all of these different things together with also some public speaking that um, eventually when self-nominating, I, I was awarded the MVP uh, award. It, it's, I know it's, it's difficult for a lot of people, especially in the engineering field, uh, to how, how do I ring my own bell? How do I spread the word about the things that I'm mm. doing and promote that with, without sounding like, you know, you're, you're self promoting, yeah. but you kind of need to self promote to be, you have to. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. And that's so, why. So every year, like when we are working towards renewals, like we have to sell ourselves, like we have to really um, show what are we doing to impact the community. And it's not, it's not just because, you know, we, we want to be MVPs. It's just a, um, I love spreading knowledge. Like I would do this anyways. I, it's right. just, um, the which is a common can, thread for MVPs. Yeah. Like we, we would be doing this stuff anyway. Yeah, exactly. It just helps, um, having access to teams and, you know, being part of conversations that you couldn't be if you're, if you're not. Um, so, you know, it's, um, yeah, that's, that's how I started. <laughs> so how did you start? So how did you, was it, uh, I, I guess that the process itself is self-nominating. Yeah, for folks mm -hmm. that weren't aware that that was a thing for a while and they quickly shut that down. So now you have yeah. to be referred in by a, a, an existing MVP or somebody yeah. from Microsoft uh, to get the sure. word in. But so what did you actually do to start cataloging and showcasing the work that you were doing? What like Was there anything that you did that was different or was it that you just started to collect that in your MVP form? So I, I think that I didn't look at much at what does it, what do I need to become an MVP? Like I didn't care too much about you have to check these boxes because there weren't really any boxes to check. So I just found ways that I liked to share knowledge uh, and contributing to the community in ways that I wanted others to give me knowledge as well in areas where I found lacking, you know. Um, so I just tried to find areas where I'm good at what I do. And continued to um, to share my knowledge and, and and try to make an impact. Well, that's that's the thing. If you if you want to make it sustainable, it has to oh. be things that you enjoy doing. So you know, there, there's I've had talked to people that are like, I hate blogging. I was like, so don't ever blog. You don't yeah. have to blog. It's like, but you have to contribute in some manner. 
And there's sure. other people that they've had. In fact, uh, I don't know if you know Sharon Weaver, a good friend of mine, fellow MVP and RD. Uh, mm -hmm. And we run a mentoring, a monthly mentoring session for people that are interested in becoming an MVP. And we right. have people that have dropped out of that because they get in, they say, well, this is just a lot more than I'm interested in doing. Yeah. And if you're not doing it because you like it, like there's no point, like you, you don't become an MVP because it's just another thing you add to LinkedIn or just another thing that gets you a promotion or whatever. Like it, you do it, but you, you kind of get awarded because you've done some good impact to the community. Um, and sure, there's there's a lot that you can do to um, to contribute to the community to help you along the way to uh, get get awarded MVP. But you know, if you're not really into it and you're not liking blogging or videos or conferences, then maybe there's other things that you can do. Um, you know. So, what is your uh, your number one favorite activity that the type of contribution? Like, is it? content creation is it events is it some other networking activity so uh, i probably like it's two things i i love doing online training it can get quite lonely sitting here in my own office with my camera and talking just right into this thing i know a lot of content creators know exactly what i'm talking about mm -hmm. and then i like the totally different thing is going to a conference where you meet thousands of people and you you go up in front of an audience of 250 500 people and you you spread some knowledge about some new thing that you're really passionate about uh, and seeing others understanding how can i use this in my business that's that's priceless like i i love doing that yeah um, so there's really two things like it's the online creation is, is one part of it and the going to conferences is also a really big part of it I want to ask, so one of the things that I, when I first became an MVP and I had people warn me about, they said, well, you got to have that, that, that vicious heckler in a live audience experience. <laughs> and I honestly, yeah. I've never had it. Hmm. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever had that experience where somebody just was looking to showcase their knowledge or, or somehow disagreed with you on something in a live setting. Have you ever had that experience? People are mostly very professional. Um, I probably had like, I can't really recall, so probably not, but I know I had a couple of tough questions over the years, which is, which have been in the lines of you're an MVP, you should know this. Yeah. Uh, or I've had people come up to me like, I don't like that you are doing this feature in C sharp. I'm like, I don't work for Microsoft. Like, sorry, I'm just relaying the, right. uh, the message here. Uh, that happens as well. So, um, uh, no, I haven't really experienced anyone trying to, uh, be mean or well th that's usually the thing too if you if you know your topic yeah. and you're especially if you're talking about a specific solution usually it's it's like another mm -hmm. method like you just it, it shared it's another way of getting to that end result it doesn't mean it's yep. it doesn't necessarily take away from anything that you've done like i've i've had some presentations where people's like oh you left this out and i was like oh thanks you know that was missing from the bullet but you're you're exactly right uh yep. or you know those kinds of things but uh, I, I, you know, that's one of those things where people have a lot of, I think, unfounded fear of that experience, yeah. about be questioned up there. Again, we're one of the great things about presenting is just like writing as part of a learning process for me is yeah. presenting is I'm getting a lot out of it as well. The interaction with the audience is one mm -hmm. of the best parts because that strengthens. That's why I, I might repeat a topic, a session ever, uh, you know, over and over again but it's mm -hmm. different every time because I've added to it most yeah. of the time. It's different. Exactly. So I I do the same type of sessions. Uh, I have one particular session that I've done probably 15 times, but every every time I do it, something's changed. I've learned something the past time or I've seen something with a new client or I've experienced something new and it's slightly different. Um, I, I think the time where you feel like I'm just doing this as a robot, I'm not learning anything that's when you should retire that talk and yeah. do something else well that's that my experience with training is is that i know some people are fantastic at it they love mm. doing that i know something about what it takes i've, I've not done a lot of on, online courses i've done a few like like you and i mean it's but having written multiple books you know how much work is involved with yeah. writing a book i know how much it is work is involved with putting together a day long or a half day workshop, as well as the online training. And, mm -hmm. and then once you have it baked, it's done. 
you can go and rinse and repeat or go to different clients and do that. And I've just found that that, like, I, I can't, there's, there's a shelf life for topics for me where uh, yeah, know, totally. people might still want them, but I'm just, I, I just, uh, I'm like, I'm done mentally with yeah. them. And even though, like, even if you do, you're talking about like workshops, which are a bit longer, but even for a one hour talk, like that probably takes me for a new talk, one or two weeks in preparation and then a lot of rehearsals. So if I can't reuse that and I'm doing it for a conference where the only thing you really get is the ticket to get to the conference and the, the airfare, then you have to be able to reuse that to, to spread the knowledge more. Like it has to be, be worth the time as well. Well, that's so another trade-off. Great- you just made me think of a question had uh, with another fellow MVP, mm-hmm. Sue Hanley. Uh, we we're having a discussion about where she uh, will not do these online recorded uh, events for that yeah. reason. Like she's like, look, I this is my money maker. I'm going. I create this content. I will bring that to paid events or yeah. you know paid or registered only webinars, those kinds of things, and not share the recordings. So that mm. she can do them again and again. And I, I imagine it's the same with a lot of your training courses. You can't go give away the milk for free. Yeah. Not really. Like something like most conferences I go to, it's promotion for other courses that I have uh, or for workshops that I run. So, it, but if someone asks me like, hey, can we record this two-day workshop? Workshop, I'm like, no, <laughs> please don't. Uh, because then I'm going to be out of, out of a job. Like that, that's not going to work. Yeah. Um, and it's also like the conversations you have in, in workshops and all the training that you do face to face. It's it's the conversations that are really important. Like, sure, I have some message to to um, to share and some knowledge to share as well. But it's always these high conversations that make it even more valuable. So watching a, a two day two day recording is probably not the best way to learn a topic. Right. Well, so for folks that are interested in becoming an MVP, I mean, I, I'm sure you've been one long enough, like, like I've been, you know, year before you, uh, you know, a lot of people come forward and they ask those questions and, and I kind of have my, my set of answers, my responses to that mm-hmm. question, how to become an MVP. How do you respond to that? What guidance do you provide? Well, mostly I just tell people to do what you like, share your knowledge in the format that you feel most comfortable in, do it a lot because that helps. There's so much, there's so much, I wouldn't say competition, but there's so many, so many people contribute to others. So you have to stand out, uh, be it in videos or, you know, YouTube or do some conferences or write blog posts, but just do a lot and do what you like the most. And don't aspire to be an MVP just because it's a status or just because it's going to get you to the next thing. Do it because you like it. Well, that's uh, sound advice. That's uh, <laughs> very, very, you know, you talk to MVPs and you get some very yeah. similar answers around that, but you, you do have to like what you do, be passionate around mm. the topics that you, you cover. And that's something that, I mean, Microsoft does, I think a fairly good job of, of moving past those people that are doing it because they want the connection. They want the title yeah. versus they're doing it for the community. Uh, and mm. so that's something as we go into this renewal season, uh, you know, the, the first question is like, why do you want to be an MVP? Why do you want to be renewed? Yeah. And so that's a great way. There, there are people that, you know, remove themselves from the process. They said, you know, I'm just, I'm just not doing it. I'm not feeling it. I've got no time for it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and there's a time and a season for this kind of activity. And exactly. Just, and just because you're not awarded MVP doesn't mean that the stuff you do isn't valuable. Like it's just, just continue doing whatever, what do you like? Like it's, that's the most important thing. Right. Well, Philip really appreciate your time for folks that want to reach out to you, connect with you where besides your course, I know you want everybody, all the traffic to head to this, <laughs> the course where, but where yeah. are you most active in social? Where can people find you? It's probably Twitter. Um, can we share a link to my Twitter and people can just reach out if they have any questions about csharp.net or the MVP program? Like I'm happy to participate in conversations. Of course, I'll have links to all of that out in the blog post. So folks that want to find out more about Philip, reach out and don't be shy. Reach yeah. out. If you've seen one of his courses, if you've gone through that or seen him present, reach out and say hello because MVPs are usually the friendliest people out there. They, we want to hear. We try we get, to be. We get lonely quickly yeah. sometimes. <laughs> 
And it's always fun to talk to people that look at your content or read your blog posts or watches your courses or come to talks. Like it's always nice to talk about sharing experiences and then just, you know, talking tech in general. Yep. It's, it's one of my favorite things. It's why, mm. that's why I'm here. Wow. Wow.